Alright, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the third of the Tree Vault um, webinars in this series. Um, the first one was the Vault introduction and the second was the Vault in compatibility with cloud platforms, mainly BIM360 and Fusion, the Autodesk provided cloud platforms. Uh, this last uh, webinar is the um, data management, Autodesk Vault Professional for data management. We're largely, largely going to be talking about property data and metadata in Vault and how we can streamline some workflows around those uh, in the Vault environment. Uh, so we'll go through the spreadsheet and I'll just demonstrate a couple of the um, parts as we go within the Vault environment using AutoCAD or Inventor. Um, so if you missed the first two um, webinars are available on our YouTube page as well. So uh, next slide, there we go. Okay, so um, CAD data management. So basically, if you um, are working in CAD, be it AutoCAD or Inventor, uh, you're you're likely going to want to use Vault as a means to um, standardize your workflows, but also as a means to have a repository with traceability on all your files, the ability to see who made changes to files, when they were changed, what changes were made, the ability to go back through revisions. Um, there's a lot of functions in Vault. It's highly customizable and highly varies from customer to customer. So managing your CAD data is uh, vital to remain competitive in today's market. Uh, there are many options out there depending on your requirements. Do you want your files locked down secure or even validated? Um, do you want them in, in on your company network? Um, on cloud, are you storing your data on cloud drives or on your local company network? Do you want to be able to share these files with customers? Do you want to be able to pr produce PDFs from them? Do you want to have metadata associated with them, properties, stuff like that? In general, if you're using a CAD platform at all, um, it's advised to also have a CAD data management system. And if you're using Autodesk CAD software, um, the best platform you can get is the Autodesk Vault um, CAD data management system. Uh, so moving on there, um, you might have seen some of these slides in the previous um, webinars, but uh, this particular slide will be heavily focused on property and metadata management in Autodesk Vault. Um, if you manage your properties right, um, and this can vary from customer to customer, so if you're in, say, the manufacturing industry, you might want things like stock numbers, part codes, um, vendors, suppliers, costs, things like that associated with your drawing parts. If you're in maybe pharmaceutical or food and drug, you might have metadata that is required, be it GMP, um, is, is this kind of a GMP drawing, is this drawing um, validated, um, is this approved? Um, lots of kind of metadata can be attached to any file type basically and I'll go through some examples involved here shortly. Um, once you have a good metadata associated with your drawing it will streamline the search and reuse of your data so if you have a bunch of drawings and they're all s supplied by a certain vendor and you're keeping your metadata up to date um, and you want to search your vault for all parts that are supplied by a certain vendor and all the drawings associated with those parts keeping something like a part number populated is vital to, um, or even keeping the vendor as a property on those files will allow you to search for that vendor within your vault environment and then look at all the drawings that are, are all the parts that are provided by that particular vendor. Um, and then we have integration with ERP systems. So if you're using an enterprise resource planning system, something like SAP or Citrix or one of those for stock management or for work order management, basically anything with properties or metadata whatsoever, um, we can set up, and we have done for many customers in the past, set up a link between the vault metadata and the um, database system itself. Um, I won't be demonstrating this with any particular third-party application, um, but it, it has been done. If it's something you're interested in, reach out to your Autodesk reseller. Um, so next, uh, just some capabilities of Vault. I might have already gone through some of this before. Um, Vault is cloud, Vault can be cloud-enabled. Vault supports add-ins for the um, Autodesk CAD software, Inventor, AutoCAD, Revit. Um, we have the ability to automatically create PDFs and DWFs. Um, there's third-party add-ins for SolidWorks, Bentley, Creo, for some of the competitors to um, AutoCAD in terms of CADing applications. You can still use those file types and put them into Vault and have that full compatibility there as well. 
um, it supports Microsoft Word, Office, Excel. Um, there, I'll be showing some examples of, with a Word document here in a little while, just some metadata on that as well. So if you're working in maybe a, a, a validated environment, um, be it food and drug or oil and gas or one of those kind of industries, you might have metadata that you need attached with Word documents, so standard operating procedures or particular documents that are important to your company's workflow. You could retain those involved, you could revision control those involved, and you could have attached metadata with those as well. Um, so just some more of the capabilities of Vault. Again, I've gone through a lot of these in the earlier webinars. Search and reuse of data, concurrent design, um, traceability, um, integration with any CAD if you're using um, Inventor or Revit. Um, relationship tracking, project organization. Again, I'm not going to be showing every one of these. Some of them were shown off earlier on, but largely today we'll be focusing on uh, the metadata management um, within the Vault. Um, I'll just move on to the next slide. So editing file properties. So this is easier shown than um, explained via this um, presentation. So uh, when you're in your vault environment, um, and this is just a, a demo vault that I've set up for these webinars, um, you will be familiar with um, already the folder structure or the layout of a vault window. Um, on the left side here you will have similar to say Windows File Explorer. On the left you have your folder structure. In the center you have files and over on the right here you might have a preview. So vault has all that plus many more features. So down the left you have your folder structure. Uh, in the middle here you have the files you're looking at. Down the bottom then you have the ability to preview files but you also have stuff like change orders. So are these files being modified via change order? Are they being tracked? Are they being um, reviewed and approved by um, reviewers and approvers or engineers in your um, site and your um, in your environment. Um, we have where used, which is the ability to go back and forth between files that are linked to each other. So in AutoCAD, if you have files that are have xrefs, um, you can you can view you can view where that xref is used um, and in in with AutoCAD files within the Vault environment and with um, essentially you can go from a file that's xref into another file without ever opening the file you can just see it down here at the bottom um, I suppose I could show an example in here so suppose we have a file here that has a bunch of xrefs in it in this case xref3 is in the master file and we can navigate to that so again if you were working on this file outside of vault you wouldn't know what files are linked to it um, without opening the AutoCAD application and bringing up the XREF manager window. Um, within Vault you can kind of see where those files are. You can just right click on a file from here and select go to folder and that will take you right to the XREF. So you have the ability to kind of jump back and forth um, between use, uses and where used. Um, this makes more sense in the Inventor environment so let me just quickly go into Inventor. So if you have say an assembly in Inventor, if you're familiar with 3D modeling, you can expand that assembly and you can see um, you have a, tree, a 3D model that is an assembly that is composed of these um, four parts and you, this uh, is highly useful in larger CAD environments. Um, in this particular CAD demo environment I only have a couple of hundred drawings in here but suppose you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of drawings um, you might want to be able to jump back and forth between um, files so being able to um, take this part and see how many assemblies this part is used in, you, you could just right click and select go to uh, folder, it will take you right to that part and if you go to uh, where used, you can see that that part is used in two different assemblies. So again, uh, imagine this is a larger vault environment, um, you would see it being, suppose this part is used in 100 assemblies or 1000 assemblies, you'd be able to see that in vault that's something you can't really do in a standard file folder structure environment. And again, you can do all that same stuff with XREFs in AutoCAD also. So anyway, just on editing properties there, um, which is why we're here today, um, I'll just go back to my inventor folder structure here, and I'm just going to take a bunch of files here, say uh, these three here called blushing one, two, and three. And over here on the right, um, we have this properties window. So the, the top half of these, um, everything under system, these are system-defined properties. These are um, built into Vault. They're there by default. 
Um, they can't really be moved or changed or deleted or anything like that. But further down here, we have user-defined properties. So you can create properties and link them to your files. Um, you can link them to different file types or you can work in categories. Um, categories is a means to, of applying different rules to different file types. So suppose you had... Um, you want all your inventor drawings to have a certain uh, revision scheme, a certain life cycle, a certain number of properties. Um, some said your inventor files will have stock number, part number, work order number, a couple of those kind of properties. And say your CAD drawings or your PDFs mightn't necessarily need those properties. Then you might use categories so that you'll have different um, categories available to you, um, which will allow you to use to have different rules on different file types. So anyway, just on editing properties in bulk here, um, I've got three files here, and let's just say I want to edit three of the properties associated with this. Um, so very simply, I can grab, say, stock number here as an example, um, maybe uh, engineer, and maybe cost. And if I go up here on the top right and hit, hit edit selected properties, it will take me to this window, which I'll stretch out a small bit. Uh, here we go. So almost like Excel, this is quite simple to fill in. Uh, so let me just put in my own name here as the engineer. Um, you can grab the corner here and drag this down, and this will fill in the, the, the data. So again, imagine you're doing this with a large number of drawings. Suppose you put in a 1,000 drawings into a folder, and you want to put a vendor on all of those drawings. You can just edit, select all those drawings, hit Edit Selected Property, uh, pick the vendor, and fill in that vendor name for all of those drawings and that will allow you then to later search for that property um, within the vault environment. Uh, suppose you have a stock number for these so I'll just give an example there one two three um, I can just drag that down. Um, now unfortunately it doesn't have the uh, capabilities of Excel that when you drag it down it'll populate the next number up but at least it will give you kind of a a starting point for editing these properties. I accidentally hit F1 there, which brought me into uh, the help page, so apologies for that. So back here, we're just putting in the properties and cost, you know, 10, 20, 30. I'm not going to, I'm just putting in some uh, off the top of my head values here, and we'll just click OK on those, and that will update those properties. And um, now that we have those properties updated, I'll just hit close here. We take one of those files and if we view it down here, we can see the engineer property is now filled in with the value that I put in, the stock number as well. Uh, so I suppose why is this useful? Um, you want to be able to search for this kind of stuff. So if I right click up here and select customize view and select fields, um, I can actually sort by these properties. So let's say I put in um, engineer there or stock number. Um, let's go with stock number. So I can just add stock number here, and we'll close that, and over here you can see um, the stock numbers that I entered, and if I sort by stock number, um, I know admittedly a lot of these don't have, have a stock number, but I can sort um, by any of these columns, and it'll give me the files that I've put in um, based on this stock number. Um, I can also do searches, filter like you would in Excel, based on a certain stock number, so if all of these had, say, I wanted all files with the stock number 123 and click on that, it will give me all the files in that particular folder with the stock number 123. Um, so I'll just go back to all here and hit close. Um, so that's largely kind of editing properties in bulk and edit them, editing them quickly within the vault environment. It's quick, it's easy, it's fairly painless. Um, largely being able to search for them is highly useful as well. So let me just hit the find button up here and give an example again. So let's say I use um, engineer, which is the property I filled in there a little earlier. So if I put in engineer property and do contains, and just put in my first name here, and just add that to the search criteria across the bottom, click find now. This will give all the um, files in the entire vault with the engineer um, me, with the property filled in. So suppose I want to add, again, this, um, all these row fields or columns are customizable um, for the user the same way you would do it in, um, you could do it in the File Explorer environment as well. So if I went and hit View and Details, um, we can add um, various uh, rows and columns in here. We can do all that in Vault as well. So Customize View, Fields, 
suppose I add the stock number here as well. Um, stock number, add, OK, close. And there we have the stock number associated with those. And suppose I want to do a search for all files created by me as the engineer, but I want to stack search criteria. I also want to do all files that also contain the stock number um, one, two, three, and this should take some of these, I think. I might need to put a star on this. Let's just add this and do a find. So there we go. That will give me all files in this vault created by me, the user, um, or with me as the engineer assigned to that um, file, and all containing the stock number one, two, three, and I put a star at the end there because some of these are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, etc. So it's just a great way of searching and reusing and filtering down your data within Vault. Um, that, that's kind of the purpose of using property data within the Vault environment. Um, so um, that's, I suppose, editing properties in bulk and searching and reusing the property data. Uh, I'll just go back to my spreadsheet here for a minute. So that was just the first that slide. And again, we went through this already. The next thing I want to talk about is Vault Data Standard. So Autodesk Vault Data Standard is a free add-on which comes with Vault. So if you have Vault Professional, you already have Vault Data Standard. The problem is a large number of Vaults have not implemented Vault Data Standards because there's a bit of configuration in it. Um, you need a certain level of knowledge with um, the likes of Visual Studio programming in PowerShell. But again, um, if you reach out to your Autodesk reseller, so if, if you have a Vault through um, ProCAD, we'd be happy to... Um, start a project and set up a vault with these uh, data standard um, component added. And I'll go through some of the uh, some examples of what data standard is and what it's for. Uh, to give a kind of a vague explanation, uh, it standardizes data entry. Uh, it's an Autodesk product, so it's supported by Autodesk, and it comes with the vault installation. So when I say it standardizes data entry, what it actually does is it force, you can set it up so that um, certain properties have to be entered on file check-in. So if you want to streamline your workflow and you want it so that when your CAD operator saves a file and checks it in, if he's obligated to put a stock number or say a part number or a vendor or some kind of a property in with the file, he won't be allowed to check that file in until he puts in a value with one of those um, particular, for one of those properties. Again, this is all highly customizable, so it'll depend on each customer which properties are important to them. Um, whether they want to implement these features or not, but largely that is what data standards is for, and there is some customization available with it. Again, I'll go through. I'll, I'll be showing it off here shortly as well. So, um, just some slides on data standards before I show it off in the Vault environment. Um, here we have the data standards dialog. So over here on the right, this is kind of a generic version of the data standards dialog, but essentially. Again, I'll show it off a uh, version that I have set up in the vault, but um, over here you have a bunch of shortcuts that have been enabled. You have a folder structure that a CAD user is filling out. So essentially when a CAD user creates a file and saves it, they get this dialog box and they're prompted to fill in these par properties. Um, some properties can be made compulsory, so you can't click OK until a, cer a certain property, like in this case, title. You need to have a title. When you put the title in, that will allow you to click OK, and then that will allow you to check your file into Vault. So essentially, you're forcing users to put properties on their files, which is useful if you want if you have a large database of files and you want to be able to search this database for all files created by a certain user or um, that have a certain title. Again, some some of these properties will be automatically filled in. So um, stuff like um, which CAD, which user created a file is actually there anyway because um, that user will be logged into the vault when they're checking the file in. So you wouldn't necessarily need it for the user, but say something like stock number or um, part number or part code or a vendor or supplier. These are kind of values that the vault wouldn't know itself based on who's checking the file in. It would be something that the user would be expected to enter on data entry. And just here across the bottom, we've shown an example here of where um, the AutoCAD title block can be updated based on the property entry in the vault. So again, when you're filling in this, these properties and you click save and check it in, you'll see the title block will actually update with the values that you put into the data standards dialog. So again, a lot of this could be done by workflows, internal workflows. So I mean, you could set up standard operating procedures in your office and say, look, you have to put this value or this property on every drawing that you save and check in. But it, data standards allows you to enforce that. 
Um, it also allows you to enforce the use of, say, certain templates or, um, again, mo data entry mostly, but um, I'll show some examples here shortly. Um, another example here is just, uh, this is the Vault Data Standards dialog box here again. Uh, this is the properties within AutoCAD, so if you were to right-click on an AutoCAD file and select properties, you would see a bunch of properties here um, within AutoCAD. Also, if you were to go back to AutoCAD here and go to Drawing Utilities and Drawing Properties. So what I'm talking about here is the properties in here, and I've none actually put in here, but if you're using properties within your AutoCAD files, you might already be filling in some of these properties. Um, not necessarily a lot of people will be using this feature, but largely Vault kind of enforces those. So you can link the Vault properties with the file properties, and they will be visible to you here, as well as uh, visible to you in the Vault environment. And again, they'll, you can also map them to your title block again, so some of those will be visible as attributes within your um, AutoCAD title block. So I'll just show off here um, a quick workflow. If I go to Vault and just close off this, <coughs> suppose I go to AutoCAD folder here and I go New Standard File. So this here is the Data Standards dialog box. Um, if you have Vault already, you might not have seen this because it's not, it's, you have to have Data Standards installed on top of the Vault for this to work. So it is an Autodesk component. Um, Autodesk do support it, obviously. Um, so there is some customization in it. You can see here I've put our own company logo ProCAD here in the bottom left. Um, again, you can put your own company logo onto this dialog box and you can customize this. This has been heavily customized. We've done it for many different customers. In some cases, they might have properties that are filled out in a drop down down the left. These could be pushed across the top. The properties on the right here will appear based on which category you pick. So you can see I change from category, I get different properties. So again, I'm asked what type of drawing I'm creating right now. I can select an AutoCAD. That will give me the AutoCAD template. So I have an, an, Auto, uh, an AutoCAD template in the templates folder, which I've set up. If I had a number of AutoCAD templates, they'd all be available to me in here. Um, numbering scheme, again, if you're using numbering schemes within Vault, this will allow you to enforce the numbering schemes. So every drawing will all have this, always have the same uh, numbering scheme. So suppose I've just set up a some exam an, an example numbering scheme here so suppose every file in my vault had to be called pro hyphen and then this was department so mechanical electrical or civil so let's say this is mechanical and then this last number will be sequentially generated by vault so it'll just give the next available number um, over here on the right you can see the properties associated with this category for this file that I'm going to be entering now and I cannot create this file until I enter at least the three properties that I have made compulsory here so let's just put something in for par code one two three four five six job number again just one two three just generic examples uh, company here I've actually set this up as a drop down property so this is something you could do with your vendors you could do something like this with suppose you want a property and you want a drop down list of potential values that your um, CAD operators will be choosing on the at the point of creating these files or the point of checking in a file um, then you can hit this drop down pick a company and you can see the OK button becomes available to me here as well so quickly, I'm just going to put in some uh, titles here as well, just to show off the title block. Um, so I suppose let's give an example, P and ID for uh, P and ID for waste treatment, right? So I'll just click OK on this. Uh, I'm not going to fill in every single property. And that will create a drawing in the vault, uh, which is this one here. And uh, it'll create a work in progress. It'll give it a category I chose. Uh, the properties that I entered will be filled in over here. And then when I open the drawing, it'll have used the template, which I set up for this drawing. So I'm just checking it out now. And I'll open my AutoCAD. Uh, that's opening my plan 3D, never mind. But uh, it, it's I have AutoCAD here as well. Either way, I will still be able to see this drawing. Um, so if you can just bear with me there for a second. I suppose I could have opened with AutoCAD directly. So I'll just do uh, Vault. Open. So you might already be familiar with uh, the Vault ribbon here at the top. Um, you would have seen this in the earlier webinars or if you already have Vault. 
Um, the vault tab here you can select open a file and this will take you to the open window within the vault and suppose I go to my uh, the AutoCAD folder and I can choose the file that I created there a minute ago and open it. So this is the file I just created while PNID is opening in the background there I'll just close that again because we don't need to go through Plant 3D. So um, this is the file I just created there a moment ago and you can see the properties I entered for the drawing title lines 1, 2, 3 and 4 PNID for waste treatment are actually already populating in uh, to the title block. So again this is prop these properties are linked to the title block. Um, additionally you have job number this was a property I entered as well the drawn by is taken from the user that I <coughs> excuse me the drawn by is taken from the user that I was logged into the vault at the time of creation so if I just go back to the vault there you can see I was actually logged into the this vault as administrator again I haven't just I haven't created a, a large enough number of users in this vault to show off um, my own put my own username here but just logged in as administrator you can see it's telling me who drew this particular drawing um, so again a lot of these these properties will be filled in um, automatically based on by your vault um, when you enter them on file creation and you can still open the attribute editor and enter in the other value, values you're looking for so stuff like sheet there let me put in sheet one of one um, number of sheets one and I click OK on that and you can see there sheet one of one is now showing up down here so that's streamlining your properties um, largely you can link the properties to your um, to your your drawing, um, your AutoCAD drawing. This can be done in Inventor as well. Um, I have Inventor open here as well, so I might just show off a quick example. Um, so let's say I create a new part, just very quickly. So you'll have to forgive my inventor capabilities here. I'm just going to draw the most simple component I can think of, which is a circular disk. So we'll just draw a circle and extrude. Click OK. So this is my part. This is what I'm checking in. When I click Save up here, you can see immediately I'm giving the data standards dialog box. So this is recognizing that I'm logged into the vault. It's recognizing that I'm saving a new part, which I've just created, and it's asking me to fill in the necessary metadata with that part. So let's say I choose my category, I choose um, company here is a, a, a mandatory property. So anything, any property can be set as mandatory. Again, this is highly customizable. customizable. It will vary from customer to customer. Um, so you can make certain properties mandatory. Um, you could make the numbering scheme mandatory. Again, this would be say pro mechanical and then the next number available. We have a comments box here available, so just new part. Um, again, I'm not going to fill in every property in this example. Um, up here, it's just giving me wh which folder structure I want to put this into. So across the bottom here, we have the path as well for where this file has been saved to. And then in the vault, it's going into vault designs and workspace. So if I click OK on that, the next thing I see is my check-in window. If I click OK on that, that will check the file in. And if I go back to vault, um, and we go to designs workspace we should see the file that I created here earlier pro mech 006 and that was the one that I just created there timestamp and all uh, 14th of May at 10 30 so that was there one minute ago so uh, just back to the data standards again uh, just to kind of summarize what data standards is it's the ability to enforce um, the use of templates to enforce certain folder structures and to enforce the entry of particular properties associated with a file on file creation or on file check-in. Um, again, the, these slides are all just basically what I showed you on the screen here earlier. So this dialog is customizable. It can be changed around a small bit. Different properties will be available depending on your company requirements. If you have a bunch of templates, you can put them in the vault. Um, so just lastly here on the templates, and I'll just show off quickly Word as well before we finish up. Um, but with templates here, and I'll show you in my vault, this templates folder, uh, I've set up AutoCAD Inventor and Microsoft Office templates. So in the AutoCAD template, I have a ProCAD.dwg. And when I created a drawing, this is the template that it used. Um, so creating a new drawing will enforce that you use a particular template. 
Um, again, this is the template that I used with this particular title block that we had set up prior. Um, again, inventor, same idea. We have an inventor drawing template here. Um, you can map the properties of these this title block also. So if you're doing inventor drawings, sheet views, elevation plan, in view of, say, your parts or your assemblies, you can create drawings from those assemblies, which is fairly streamlined in Inventor already, but you can also have the properties and metadata that you enter appear on the title block as well. So again, you're streamlining your workflow, you're making, you're enforcing CAD operators to enter certain property data on file creation and file check-in. Um, Office, I'll just do one last example here in Office. So um, suppose I want to create a new Office file, suppose you're using this is just to show off that this is, is this can be used for people that aren't even just using CAD. So I'm in, say, standard operating procedures here, and I want to create a new Word document, new standard file. I'll just choose, say, the Office um, category. I'll tr hit the drop down here, and I'll pick Office document, which will give me the Office, office templates. I know all my templates are called ProCAD, but you can see this is giving me the template for a Word document. Um, I'll just put in a title here, so webinar. And today is the 14th of May. Um, numbering scheme, again, we can force numbering schemes, so pro, civil, and the next number available. And the path it's given me here is this folder here. Uh, the reason it's given me this path here and it's not really allowing me to change it is because I actually chose this folder before I hit create new file. So doing so will actually put the file into that folder. So I just put in the title here. I click OK. That will create a new file. I can open it and check it out from here. Um, and you can see it's taken my Word template. And if I just double click up here into the header and I do F9, which is the button for updating fields, um, you can see that this put in the title that I put in when I was creating the file webinar on the 14th of May. It's also put in the file name. So I've linked these properties into the header of the Word document. Again, streamlining your workflow and just kind of making things faster and easier. So document ref there will always have the name of the file that you actually created and put up there. Um, the likes of page of one on one, this is a word function. So adding more pages to this would just uh, increase the number of pages. That's not necessarily a, an Autodesk feature. So if I were just hit return down there, you see I have page one of two, page two of two. So basically you can streamline your creation of word documents. You can do this with Excel or PowerPoint. You can set up as many templates as you like. Um, this is all kind of, functions that can be set up in your vault if you're interested in setting up stuff like this you know do reach out to your autodesk reseller if we're your autodesk reseller let us know we can arrange demos we can arrange uh, discussions if needs be if so, you did want to implement or streamline any of your workflows and enforce cat operators or even people just creating word documents or excel documents to enter certain properties and fill in certain data and follow certain templates and follow certain workflows this is all largely um this is all something that Vault is capable of. It's largely customizable and it varies from customer to customer. So um, it will be, it will vary depending on your requirements. Uh, so that's it for today, I think. Um, again, thanks for coming. Um, I think I've got to the end of the PowerPoint presentation here. Yeah, so uh, if you have any questions, I'll stick on here for a minute. I'm happy to let you talk on the microphone or if you want to just throw a query into the chat box, uh, please do so as well. Um, thanks for coming, thanks for your time today.